Welcome to The Weekly Word, a 52-week journey through the Bible. My name is Matt Lidikanen, and with me is Steve Lampy, and we are both Christian pastors currently serving at Messiah Church in Midland, Michigan, and we're excited to be journeying with you through the Bible. Every week, we'll be taking a big-picture view of the scripture you'll be reading, point out some points of interest along the way, and together gain a better vision of the God who loves us. This podcast follows along with the daily readings found in the one-year chronological Bible reading plan and resources from Tyndale House Publishers. Well, how long has it been? It's been about 70 years? The answer is yes. It's been 70 years since the last time we were on this podcast because we're going back to Jerusalem. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I have always wanted to visit. Uh, I have been there. I mentioned that. I went yeah. to Israel like a couple of years ago. It was awesome. Yeah. Totally recommend. But we are in the, so the timeline where we're at. So we've had Daniel. Daniel is one of the first groups of, of and his friends. They're the first group of exiles. The other people have been exiled. Lamentations, all that. So that's been a couple of weeks. Mm. And so now we are returning to Jerusalem because Ezra is a priest and it's on his heart. He wants to go back on home and rebuild the temple. He's gotten, we learned in Daniel last week that there is a, there is a new king in town. So Babylon has been uh, also judged, just like God promised and prophesied that he would in the prophets, that they, the instrument of judgment that he used would itself be judged. And so now Persia is the new boss. Mm-hmm. And we got Xerxes, Artaxerxes. Those are fun names. Yeah. Uh, if I have a son, I'll have I'll name them <clears throat> Artaxerxes or Xerxes. It's, it's a toss up, you know. Got to flip a coin. Maybe we'll pick one of those. Um, both, <laughs> both great names. Both great. <laughs> yeah, Quality. for real. And uh, so the they're more these kings are far more uh, chill as far as other forms of worship, other religions. Mm-hmm. They're more polytheistic and just kind of welcoming. Um, mm-hmm. and they're good with it. So they're like, yeah, you can go back go to ahead, Jerusalem. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we'd yeah. love for you to build a temple. In fact, mm-hmm. here's some money to go do that. And yeah. so they're the they're the favor of God is put upon Ezra and the people who return with him to go rebuild the temple. And they got some difficulties and challenges along the way, but they were overall blessed, and they do succeed in building the temple over the course mm-hmm. of the week. So that's, like, that's timeline-wise kind of where we're yeah. at. And then next week, it'll be Nehemiah, and he wants to build the wall. And there's all mm-hmm. sorts of things that kind of the monkey wrenches that get thrown into his plan, but we'll get to that. Yeah. So in the meantime, we have adventures in Persia and some prophetic ministries. One of my favorite books in the whole Bible. Is this a good story? It's Esther. Mm. You know? Yeah. You like Esther? I love Esther. It's an awesome. It's like of all the Old Testament mm-hmm. like books, I feel like so many people can relate to Esther because honest, it's one of the um I think it's one of the only books that doesn't specifically mention um, God. Like, is that You're right? Yeah, yeah. I was that's, just to say that. But the, the 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 her life and the story behind it, you can see so much of God's um, like sovereignty and plan unfold in mm-hmm. presence without him being mentioned. That it's just it's it's like life, and I think that's what it is. It's that it's. Sometimes you wonder where God is in things, and mm-hmm. I think Esther is a really and how we can relate to that book is that's how we can relate. Is you wonder where God is within our life, and it's not as though we, in order for Esther to be the Word of God or powerful as other books of the Bible, it didn't it did it wasn't necessary that God was mentioned. It's only necessary that God was present. Like that was this is the Word of God because God is God is working in and through this time, and honestly, in the face of what could have been one of the greatest um, just tragedies for the Jewish people yeah. being annihilation. Like the Holocaust before the Holocaust. Yes, this yeah. is what we're talking about. That um, what was that? What was what was what they were faced with was the extermination of mm-hmm. Israelites, and yeah. God used. We always say one woman. Yes, there was one woman Esther, but there was also other other people that were used within that. Yeah. Um, to fulfill God's plan. Now, Esther, within that, was is a great example of, of faithfulness. And this is that one scripture verse where she says, Yeah, if oh, I, yeah, if I, her if declaration. I will go, like, yeah, go. she's going, in, she's going yep. before the king. She says, if I die, I die. 
Um, yeah, if you can find that, it's such a such a great such a great um, well, understanding way. of the confidence that she had in the Lord that He will be faithful and that she was willing to depend on His faithfulness, whether in mm-hmm. the face of death or not. It's almost kind of re- kind of reminds me of remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm-hmm. where they said, "Look, we know that God can deliver us, but even if He doesn't, He's He's still He's yeah. still He's still going to deliver us. He's still God." Like it's not it's not gonna make it any less God. Um and so Esther says uh something very similar to that in 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 uh this book too. And what's yeah, what's super intense and we just don't really have a category for this because our rulers are not this way, but the 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 thing that's holding her up because this plot by Haman, who's the bad guy, he just gets peeved by the Jewish people. He's just like, Wouldn't it be great if we just got rid of them? Mm-hmm. And and the king's like, I don't care. Yeah. Sure, and he issues this edict, goes across the entire like known or like Persian Empire, mm-hmm. and it's read aloud. Like the edict's read aloud in the towns, mm-hmm. and all the Jewish people are weeping and lamenting because it's like it's basically was that one? There's like a movie that came out that was like murders like legal for a day or something like that. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? Have you I've seen, never seen that one. Yeah, I I wouldn't <laughs> encourage you to. Um, I haven't seen it either, but that's what I was I, I heard that's the premise of the movie, and that was basically awesome. it, like. For a day, there was a day That's that was prescribed in this in this declaration that people who just were basically a bunch of anti semites just go out and kill their Jewish neighbor because that's, that's what they crazy. could do, and that was like, and they were all freaking out because, well, yeah, this is going to be the end yeah, well, and yeah. that was kind of the that was kind of the reality of that day decree was yeah like, yeah that was and, it. and it was a nonchalant like it was just, the king was like yeah sure go for it. Yeah. Like, like no thought. It just seems like in scripture, like no thought too whatsoever. I yeah. found that verse. I'll read it. It seems chill. So Esther says, mm-hmm. after we fast, I will go to the king. So she's presenting herself to the king um, amidst other women, right? And I know it is against the law to go to the king if he didn't call me. Yes. But I will he has go to do extend it. the golden yeah. scepter. But I will do it anyways. And she says this, if I die, I die. Boom. Yeah. Mic drop. Yeah. She's so cool. Yeah. I want to be like Esther when I grow up. Yeah. Me too. She's pretty in the confidence. That's what I want to be like. Her, yes. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it was, it was those one liners. It's the, yeah, it's the Shadrach, mm-hmm. Meshach, Abednego. Mm-hmm. If we die, you know, or, you know, if we perish, if I perish, I perish, Esther, and then them. It's like God's able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we ain't going to bow down. Yeah. Yep. No way. Yeah. Um, and I just love, there's some great, great irony. Good. This is a good story. It, it mm-hmm. reads really good. It reads, it reads quickly because it's just, it's a narrative. It's a great narrative. Um, the beginning, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. There's we, there's plenty to say about it, but yeah, it's the presence of God who is there the whole time. I believe this is where the festival, Jewish festival of Purim, mm. comes from. Okay. And I went oh, to a play Esther. of the Book of Esther, mm-hmm. and it was at the Grand Rapids Theater, and they. And this is just a thing that they they do. They, they tell a story, and everyone's supposed to just be really loud. Mm-hmm. And there's different ways you can do this. And it's a big it's a big party because you know we didn't die, we didn't get mm-hmm. all killed. This is fantastic. But whenever they tell the story, and when we were at the play, they did this. They're like whenever Haman's on on stage, like just just boo. They, they told us like <laughs> to boo him. Yeah, boo. Yeah. You know, that's so the entire audience Haman. is like he comes on stage and yeah. we're like, ah, oh, you suck. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, so Haman's the one that's against Mordecai and Esther. Yes. He's the one that hates the Jews, and he's the one that wants to see them all annihilated. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of bright, like kind of just tricking the king into. Yeah. I don't think the king has 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 a real like. I, I want to make sure this happens. I think that Haman's kind of the 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 desire to to, to annihilate the Jews comes from this man named Haman who is high in power but at the end of all this we know that that God does work through Esther essentially to bring him to the king to have favor in the king's eyes and then um Haman tries to trick the, the uh, him and Mord- or Mordecai into being killed and it, ends, and it ends up coming back on Haman and Haman's the one that actually dies um mm-hmm. And the and the entire yeah he sets up this pole to impale Mordecai yeah. because he's just complaining he's like I'm so peeved about yeah. Mordecai. He didn't he didn't rise and show fear in my presence. He was filled with rage, it says. Yeah. It says verse ten, Haman restrained himself and went home. And he called his whole family and friends together and he's just like, I'm awesome. He's like that's what it says. For he, he boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons and all the ways the king had honored him. Mm-hmm. Which sounds like the worst party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all about, then, it's, it's all about Haman again. 
And then he just t- tap top it all off. And that's not all. Haman added, I'm the only person going Esther invited to the company of the king to the banquet she gave. And she mm-hmm. has invited me along with the king tomorrow. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai singing at the king's gate. And his friends are all like, hey, well, maybe you could like set up a poll and you mm-hmm. could impale him on it. Mm-hmm. That's their idea. Yes. <laughs> He's yes. just like, that sounds awesome. Let's do it. Let's and do so that. he like, it says, this suggestion delighted Haman and he had the poll set up. So the poll's yeah, there. And it's like, going to come back to get him. It's going to come get, get Yeah, chapter seven. Yeah. And so Esther reveals the plot and he's like, mm-hmm. and the queen, the king is really angry about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love this part. So he's like, so she says, this is what the, the plot is. And he is so disturbed by this. He's like, who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing. Esther said, an adversary, an enemy, this mm-hmm. vile Haman. And then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king mm-hmm. got up in a rage, left his wine, and went out into the palace garden. So he has to blow off some steam. And Haman, realizing the king had already assembled on the... Oh, wait. Sorry. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, he missed Gotta go back a page. <laughs> yeah. Whoopsie. He decided his fate. He stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. And just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. <laughs> The king exclaimed, will he even molest the queen while mm. she is with me in the house? And it was just, just, I mean, everything was working against him at that yeah, point. Everything, yeah, it yep. just did not go well. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then the poll, they're like, by the way, there's a poll in his yard. Mm-hmm. We could impale him on it. And yeah. he's like, do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how, so the poll that, and that was the end of Haman. Mordecai, yeah. So that yeah. was just, it's funny. It's funny. It's brutal, mm-hmm. but there's some comedy in it. Yeah. Because it's dramatic irony. It's good yep. times. It's good times. Yeah. Maybe some other people don't agree with it. Like, why do you think that's funny? It's gross. I don't know. I'm a guy. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> Look, looking back at it. Looking back at it. Yeah. Looking you see, back. You at see it. the irony in it that that what was meant for evil, God turned yeah. for good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a, there's an aspect of reading through Esther and the other like the Ezra and Nehemiah as we get into it. It's like kind of the more modern. Or I guess not modern, but more familiar sense of the Jewish people because we won't have them referred to as Jews mm-hmm. until like, literally here. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure because mm-hmm. not even like it's the people of Judah or the kingdom of Judah, but then Jews, Judah, Jews. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear it. Yep. Um, so the first time that that kind of comes up, so that's like the identity of the Jewish people is primarily Judah, mm-hmm. and that's kind of it. Yeah, but. And that's kind of moves it moves right along into like the modern like Jesus is modern you mm-hmm. know contemporary with Jesus is the Pharisee movement of just being very zealous for the law. You see a little bit of that flavor in Nehemiah and mm-hmm. kind of how he runs things. He's the governor. That's mm-hmm. next week, so yeah. we won't get ahead. But a um, couple things: uh, Ezra's building the temple. We talked about that, and mm-hmm. then Zechariah. There's a lot of uh, passages in Zechariah. You had one Ze- Ze- Zechariah seven, right? Some justice, yeah, calls to justice again. Yeah, so this was like um, when you talk about God's heart and and mm-hmm. what is God's desire for His people. Uh, once again, so like in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah chapter one or Isaiah fifty eight, maybe yeah, fifty eight. They talk about the people are fasting, mm-hmm. the people are doing religious activity traditions, and God knows that they're doing them, but He also knows like yeah, but your everyday life, yeah. You can do all the religious traditions you want and look religious on the outside, but how you live and how you love your neighbor is not reflective of your love right. for me. And so right. this is this is kind of another one of those scripture verses where we read that heart, once again, is being addressed in Zechariah to his people. And he says in Zechariah 7, um, and I think it starts... On verse 9, this is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. These are like many of the same declarations that he made to his people in Isaiah. Do not plot evil against each other. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly they turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or the words of the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through their earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty... Um, was very angry with them. And in the in the previous sections of this, he talks about their fasting, um, their mourning, right. their, their the, the seven months um, for the past seven years. Was it really for me that you fasted? And when you when you gathered in my name, was it really that you eat and you ate and drank for 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 me? 
it was actually for yourselves. There was no real celebration within the heart of what God has done. It was just another reason to gather and do things that were religious. And so then God confronts them and says, you know, if, 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 if this were really true, it would show in your, your justice and compassion. And I think even like, what is even like, I think it's, it's funny because even in James, he talks about being pure religious and a religious that is faultless before the Lord is, is to, is to look after widows and orphans. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's that correlation of how much selflessness that you show toward other people really is reflective of your love for God. If you really want to be religious, let it show in the way you love people. Like that's yeah. the religion that is worship. It's mm-hmm. in that everyday way in which you love and you you, you live in humility um, as a servant to the world around you. But will like the Holy Christ Spirit was. come and let, if you don't have a fog machine, will the Spirit be in it? Like is he like in your worship? I don't hear talking like, about. You want to talk about that? We got we got like <laughs> we could go there for ten minutes, man. I'd love to talk about that. No, just kidding. <laughs> just, no, yeah, no, yeah. You can actually, yes, actually, yeah, you can. The the Holy Spirit is very present, whether huh. there is a fog machine or not. Yes, really? absolutely, one hundred percent. Interesting. They survived in, in the, in thousands the... of years without him. Really? <laughs> Whoa. Yep. Absolutely. Huh. And silence. Uh, Just <laughs> <laughs> give you give me a lot to think about. Um, uh, yeah, I. Th- it's uh, it's a great call to action. Those are, these are good points. I love mm-hmm. these points in the prophets because it's like, oh yeah, I could do that today. What would that what would that look like for me? Mm-hmm. How can I care for the the poor and the destitute and the marginalized? And it it amounts to like probably the more. It's, it's challenging. I mean, really thinking through what are the, what are the in- issues today? Like Jesus, Jesus cares about the immigrant. Mm-hmm. Okay, so are there uh, people who are immigrants in our country? Yeah, there are. I mm-hmm. my my folks actually did this, and it was really cool. There was is from you know the when United States pulled out of Afga- Afghanistan, mm-hmm. there was a family that made it out. Yeah, from Afghanistan, they were so they were natives, and they. Wound up in Grand Rapids, Cascade area, where my folks attend church, and they were working with a, an organization. Um, but they would just they just came alongside them and like went grocery shopping with them, helped them kind of mm. get, just get everything that they needed to get. Mm-hmm. And now there are this family is thriving, and they mm. are they've learned English pretty well, and and really gotten their feet under them. But it was with the help of a number of individuals from my parents' church. And my parents themselves, and just them loving them and caring mm-hmm. for them, and not really asking anything in return. Like only mm-hmm. if you come to church, or only mm-hmm. if you you know believe in Jesus. If you yeah. don't, then we're not going to help you anymore. Like mm. it was never that. It no, was just never. we're here to care be. for you. We want you to thrive. We mm-hmm. want you to be settled in this place and yeah. earn a living in this yep. in this country. And mm-hmm. that was one way that they expressed that. It was wow. super cool. Yeah. And I know, like, I know it blessed my mom, and I know mm-hmm. it blessed my dad. Like them helping them to do these things. And they learned a lot. Yeah, you know, about you have a whole other culture that you're just whole other interacting culture with. Learning about absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I think that's one of the things where, when you when, and I and I know that I know that a lot a lot of people understand this in the way, is that there's different ways to worship. Like there's different avenues in which we worship God that we're called to. Right. We have worship, singing, which we would always correlate with music. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's not it. I mean, it's an everyday life. It literally is like like what your parents did. That is so honoring to the Lord to love totally, your neighbor yeah. without expecting anything in return. Why? Because that's what Christ has asked of us. That's obedience. So obedience essentially is our worship to God. And I think that's part of the issue that the Old Testament Israelites had. And sometimes what I think what we struggle with too at times within our culture is that there's a picture of this is our worship experience. And I want the experience to be so filling for me that when I leave, mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel great, which is fine. Everybody has their own thing, and every Sunday mornings can look the way that whatever they want to do. Um, people do, and it takes different looks from traditional service to contemporary service to however people mm-hmm. want to build those. That is one, yeah. one, one way. And you have six. You have you have almost seven days left to continue worship, and whatever that looks like before that one hour takes yeah. place again next Sunday. And- let me just dove, like kind of dive back into what you said because mm-hmm. you you were quoting parts from Zechariah where mm-hmm. it's like they're doing all these things, like religious things, mm-hmm. but it's for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. 
when like just just listen to yourself when you talk, you know, not you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but other like listeners, listen to Steve. Viewer. What he's saying is wrong. Yeah, right when now. when you say like yeah. I didn't get a lot out of worship today. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know this was about you. Yeah, you yeah. know, it really needs to. And I, I've been there. I've thought mm-hmm. that like I didn't really enjoy worship today. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not about me though. Yeah, I'm here to praise God. I'm mm-hmm. here to like bless him and to serve him with yeah. my songs of praise mm-hmm. like if i just didn't feel if i'm gonna walk away with worship from worship be like yeah the, that guitar string was out of tune the whole time it was bothering me like fair yeah. enough like you know yeah <laughs> and out of tune anything's gonna yeah. bother you but you're there for a purpose and your mm-hmm. purpose is to give praise and adoration to the king because yeah. he's worthy of it yeah not so that you can feel like i'm waiting for that tingling in the spine mm-hmm. you get it today Worship sucked. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That's like, nope. Yeah. That, that, that mindset isn't isn't quite the right mindset. Are 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 all Not quite. <laughs> are, are all the are all the are all the worship services that we'll ever attend in life going to be um, this high mountaintop experience? Some may, some may not. Uh, but I'll come back to what your mom and dad did. I've always I've always um, felt worship expressed. And the joy of what I've received from the Lord through those is when, not necessarily when I've gotten been done singing songs. That's been there, and I, and I enjoy doing that with the Body of Christ. But it's it's been when I've I, I've been able to serve or to care for someone, just whether it's a family member, or someone in the community, in a way that where you've stepped back from the busyness of life and mm-hmm. you've taken time for someone else. Yeah. And you're not looking for that feeling, mm-hmm. but it's just a part of what the Holy Spirit within you produces from your life, right? So it's the way yeah, that you love good. people. And I feel like that's that's the that's the fullest extent of what we can do in regards to worship is to live our life as a sacrifice for him and to love your neighbor, I think is the greatest form of worship that we can have for God. Period. Totally. Amen. So, love yeah. that. Um and that the only thing that I would uh, point to as well before we wrap up, it's with uh, the latter part. There's there's a lot of... I was actually surprised reading through Zechariah again. I'm like, there's a lot of prophecies in here. Uh, Zechariah chapter 9 mm-hmm. has one that sounds very familiar if you've ever been to a Palm Sunday worship service. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The funny thing about Matthew's gospel regarding this is that when you read it, he's like, Jesus is riding the, the both, the, yeah. the mom and the, yeah. and the colt. Yeah. That's how he writes yeah. it. Yeah, he writes it like that. Yeah. The other gospel writers are like, yeah. no, he's just the colt or the, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, I've, <laughs> heard, I've heard that one too. On a donkey, on a colt, the foal yep. of a donkey. Like, yep. you have a, got a couple options, like A, B, or C, mm-hmm. I suppose. But he's just like, I think we're just going to be safe and stick with both of them. Yeah. Just stick with what. Zechariah is trying to say, yeah. even though he was there, you can tell us what happened anyway. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of a quirk of Matthew's gospel, two, mm-hmm. two donkeys straddling both of them. <laughs> uh, and then we have the the prophecy regarding Judas. So it is Zechariah 11. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay, but if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they valued me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord which Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. And he realized that he had betrayed innocent blood. And he goes back to the chief priests and they're like, I don't know, who cares? You do whatever seems best to you. He throws the coins back into the temple mm-hmm. and he goes and hangs himself. The tragic end of Judas. But you have it written out right there mm. in Zechariah 11. Mm. And then, let's see. Oh yeah, they will look on me, Zechariah chapter 12. Verse 10, they will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. So Jesus was Mm. pierced and he is mourned. Mm. Um, Jesus quoting, another one, Jesus quoting from chapter 13, verse 7, awake sword against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty, strike the sheep, strike strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered and I'll turn my hand against the little ones. Mm. So strike the shepherd, Jesus is captured and arrested and then the sheep will be scattered, the disciples flee. Yep. So, I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a kind of a lot of, a lot of prophecy regarding the, really the latter days of Jesus, like the last week of his ministry and his life. 
but yeah. Zechariah hits a lot of them. So Which cool. is cool. It's really oh cool. Goodness, it's like, as I was that. reading through it, I'm like, whoa, there's a lot going on here. This is still hundreds of years before Jesus yeah. ever walked the earth. Yeah. So even more cool. And even Zachariah is like, as he's, as he's, as he's speaking yeah. these and, and writing these things down, he's like, I have no idea really. I mean, there's just the in part prophecy that we know that Zachariah didn't even know when he was writing mm-hmm. it. But it's, I mean, yeah, it's just such a crazy, crazy thing to think about that this is, that a guy named Zachariah was called to be a prophet and he's writing exact details that are fulfilled in this one man, Jesus. Um, you know, I don't know how many years before Christ was came into ministry or, or was born, but it doesn't matter how many. Hundred. It doesn't yeah. matter how many. If it was, if it was fifteen years before. It, it doesn't matter um, because they're still they're just fulfilled in Christ at, at the right time, in which God sent him. So, and he did those things exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In the thirty, the thirty pieces that Judas, that's Isaiah, right? Where it says he'll be sold for thirty pieces. Yeah, it's actually it comes Isaiah, up a couple Isaiah, of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which 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 is uh, exactly what. You just sold it's just, it's yeah. just like God knew it was going to happen. Almost as <laughs> he's it. beyond comprehension. Yeah. His mind is not. Who has like known ours. the mind of the Lord? Who yeah. can who can say I could instruct? I can teach God a thing or two. Mm, that would, you would end up being like King Nebuchadnezzar on the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating the grass. About, he <laughs> ate grass like about. a cow. So don't <laughs> yeah. do that. I wouldn't don't recommend that. it. Yeah. Uh, all right. We are we're we're really close to the end of the uh, Old Testament. We're right on the cusp of it. Mm-hmm. And got a couple more weeks, literally a couple more weeks. So let's keep on trucking and we'll be we'll be with our Lord Jesus in the gospels very soon. So stay tuned until then. See you then. Thanks so much for joining us for the weekly word. If you like this podcast, be sure to rate and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay on top of new episodes. If you have any questions or have something in scripture you'd like us to weigh in on, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at weeklyword at messiahmidland.org. That's weeklyword at messiahmidland.org.